Oh, welcome to another episode of Cooking with Carbonaro. It's been a while, but I'm back. As it is none other than St. Patrick's Day weekend, we are preparing a delicious shepherd's pie. Now you're catching me in process, it ain't dirty, it's used. But uh, first thing you're gonna wanna do is brown the minced lamb. Oh, listen to that. Make sure your pan's nice and hot so you get that beautiful sizzle, huh? Now you wanna get a lot of color on that meat, so you wanna let it sit for a while. And I know what you're thinking, that don't look like a lot of meat. Dummy, you gotta do it in batches. Make sure you season with salt, pepper. But carbonaro, if I do this in batches, it's gonna take forever. Listen, lazy ass, it's what you gotta do. Meat gets browned through something called like the Maillard reaction or some shit. I'm not no science nerd, I'm not gonna explain it. But it needs enough room in the pan so that the water can evaporate and it can get nice and brown on the outside. Delicious. Oh, look at that. There's more fat in there than a plastic surgeon's garbage bin. It's gonna stop our meat from browning, so you gotta pour a little bit of that off as you go. Pro tip, wipe your pan after you do that with a kitchen rag so you don't start a fire. All right, when the meat's nice and brown, you throw it into a strainer that's inside of a bowl, give a little taste, season perfect. I think it's about time to introduce the guest star of this episode. It's a nice uh, Pinot Noir. All right, so at this point, you're gonna peel and quarter your potatoes and throw them into a pot of water with enough salt so that it's salty like the sea. All right, while you wait for that to boil, you're gonna take this pan here, lower the flame, and add some cool olive oil to cool off the pan a little bit. Now we got these beautiful leeks that have been halved and sliced. We're gonna throw that right in the hot pan. Ooh, listen to that. And we're gonna go in with one onion. All right, nobody's perfect. That's looking a little dry, so we're gonna add some olive oil to that. All right, so you're gonna wanna saute that until it's nice and soft, about five to seven minutes. And a saute literally refers to the flipping motion, but uh, I got these two dummies here, they never go away, and I'm afraid to burn them, so we're gonna use a spoon. All right, so that's looking good. Now we got this minced garlic, and it's sitting in some oil so that it doesn't burn as soon as it goes in the pan. We're gonna add that in for like a minute until it gets nice and uh, fragrant. All right, now that garlic smells delicious, we're gonna add in some Worcestershire sauce. And some tomato paste. All right, now that everybody's friendly in the pan, we're gonna throw back in the mince. All right, stir it all together, and we're gonna add in that guest star, some red wine. And then for good measure, we're gonna pour in a little more. Alright, meanwhile, we gotta check on these potatoes here. We're gonna do that by stabbing it with a fork. Alright, nothing's coming back up. I'm taking that as a good sign. These are ready. Alright, so now the alcohol and the wine has had a chance to cook off, and we're just left with all this really great flavor in here. We're gonna add some warm chicken broth. And to that, we're gonna add a sprig of fresh rosemary, just the leaves. So the reason why we add warm chicken broth is so that we're not waiting forever for it to come back up to a boil. So we're going to let that happen, we're going to reduce it down to a simmer, and we're going to let it sit. At this point you're going to want to give it a taste, make sure it's got enough salt, enough pepper, because you can't season it once it's in the plate. This is your shot. Alright, so the meat's doing its thing, let's pay attention to these potatoes. Alright, first thing we're going to throw in, nice knob of butter. And we're going to start mashing them up. Now if you fancy, you got yourself a blender, go ahead, throw them in there, it's going to make your life a lot easier. But I got a potato masher and a good arm. And for acidity, we're gonna add some sour cream. And once we got our consistency we like, some salt and pepper to taste. All right, last but not least, we're gonna add in some sliced scallions. All right, now that's cooked down to almost nothing, we're gonna add it to this casserole dish right here. And then you're gonna top that with your mashed potato. And if you're bougie like me, you're gonna use a fork to score it like this so that it nice and browns up when it bakes. By now, one of you is asking, but Carbonero, what about the carrots? What about the peas? This is supposed to be a shepherd's pie. Do I got something in store for you? So while my lackey cleans, let me explain. What we're gonna do is we're gonna braise our peas and carrots and make them as a lovely side dish. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna add some butter into this bowl here. Softened butter, not melted. If it melts, the fat protein separated will never be the same. All right, and to that, we're gonna add some mint, chopped up, frying. And mix it all together here. Ugh. All right, I only got one hand here, so you're gonna have to use your imagination, but you gotta pour this out onto a piece of plastic wrap and roll it out into a log. All right, now we're gonna take our butter log, throw it in the fridge so that I can firm up again. So an Irish guy walks into a lawyer's office and says, I heard some lady burnt her teats with some McDonald's coffee and she sued him. Is that the truth? The lawyer says, aye, that's the truth. So the Irish guy says, can I do the same to Guinness for all the ugly women I fucked? 
and I may or may not have forgot at this point in the video to remind you that you should have added salt and pepper to your potatoes so they're not blend your shit. All right, back to business. Braising is the easiest thing in the world. The first thing we got here is some beautiful fresh carrots, some frozen peas, and a hot pan. We're gonna add some butter. All right, so we want our butter to melt, but we don't want it to brown, so remove it from the heat a little bit. Just make sure it gets nice and melty in the pan for you. And into that butter, whole carrots. Remember that Mayard bastard from earlier, you don't want to overcrowd the pan so that they can brown a little bit before the next step. All right, you should have used unsalted butter, so we're just going to season it very lightly on the first step here. A little bit of salt, a little bit of pepper. And don't be impatient either, because it takes a little bit to get some color on these things. All right, now we've got some color on these things, the easiest thing in the world. We're going to add a little bit more warm chicken broth just to cover them. Just like that. We're going to let that sit for about 15 minutes till it's pork tender. And about 5 minutes before that, we're going to add those frozen peas in because they don't take as long to cook. Alright, so we already seasoned this. We're just going to taste the chicken broth a little bit and make sure that it's got enough flavor to really season those carrots. Alright, so once you can stamp this thing with a fork and it just falls right off like that, get ready to add your peas. Pour them right in there. And season it every step, even if it's just lightly. All right, once everything's nice and tender, we're going to remove it from the heat into a nice casserole bowl. Use a slotted spoon because you just want the solids, none of the liquids. All right, so now you're going to cut up a couple of slices of that nice mint butter that we made earlier and top it onto these fresh peas and carrots. I don't want to eat the easiest recipe in the world, but everybody from uh, Kelowna to Kilkenny is going to love this shit. I promise you. Try it out. All right, set your oven at 350 degrees. Bake your shepherd's pie about 20 minutes till the mashed potato gets nice and brown. Serve it all up at the same time. You've got a beautiful fucking meal.